In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the classic ladder problem where a person is climbing on a ladder that's experiencing forces and torques, and we're going to solve for the force of static friction acting on the ladder. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our forces acting on the ladder. Um, we have a uh, force of gravity acting on the ladder. We'll say right there at the center of its mass, center of its gravity, and we'll just call that mg and then we have the normal force from the ground supporting the ladder and then we have a force of static friction opposing the slide of the ladder going to the left and then we also have an additional force going this way which we'll call force from the wall which is basically a um, normal force as well Okay, um, in addition to that, um, we also have a person that's climbing on the ladder. So that person has their own MG as well. I'll just kind of slide it over here. So we'll say MPG, um, um, mass of the person times gravity. All right, so now we have a bunch of different forces going on. And because the ladder is at rest, we can assume that the net force acting on it in both directions is zero. So the some of the forces in the y direction is going to be our fn minus both of our mg's mass of the person plus mass of the ladder and that's going to equal zero and then also in the x direction we just have two different ones uh, the force of the wall minus the force of static friction and that equals zero newtons as well so we took all of our forces in the vertical direction we had one up and then two down in um, counteracting it and then one to the right and then one to the left um, counteracting each other and as i said before the net force on, along both axes is zero all right so moving on the net torque on the ladder is also zero because it's not in motion so um, there are a bunch of different forces that are providing torque on the ladder, um, but then the, in the end, they're all getting canceled out. Now, I know that if I'm looking for the force of static friction at some point, I'm going to return back to this over here, because as of now, that's the only place that force of static friction um, written. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the torque acting on the ladder. Now, what we can do is we can take a look at all the forces that are perpendicular to the pivot point and then multiply it by the R, which is the lever arm. And then our pivot point would be basically like right over here. So that's the point at which the ladder is trying to pivot around, but it's being affected by many things that's keeping it at rest. So we have three things that are providing a torque on the system. So we have zero newton meters of net torque overall and we have some from um, the ladder itself so this is the mg and i'll go ahead and put the subscript of l over here so that's the mass of the ladder uh, times g which is acting at the point uh, six meters from the pivot point because the ladder itself is 12 meters so if we go ahead and take the center of mass of it over here then its lever arm is going to be six meters so what we need to do is we need to find the perpendicular component of that force. So the perpendicular component is going to look like this. And we know that this angle over here is also 70 degrees. The reason you know that is if you take a look at this right triangle that's right here. So there's one side of it, and then here's the bottom, and then here's a hypotenuse. So we know this is 70 degrees. So if we close the right triangle over here, it's 90 degrees here which means the complement of the 70 would be right here, which would be 20. And then we have another nine degree angle here. So the complement of that 20 is 70. So the 70 translates right over there. Now, if we want this component over here in red, which we do because that is the perpendicular component um, to the ladder, we can take the force of MLG, multiply it 
by cosine of 70 degrees. And that gives us the perpendicular component. But remember, it's always the force times the lever arm. And that center of mass is located six meters away from the pivot point. And then for our MG for the person, it's going to be a similar um, idea there where we have the MG from the person. And then we're going to multiply it by the cosine of 70 degrees to find the, the component that is perpendicular. And then there's a 70 degree angle again, and we want to use cosine because that's the adjacent side to the angle. And then the blue part is our hypotenuse of our triangle. And that is seven meters from our pivot point. Um, that seven meters is actually a distance that I accidentally left out from the original problem. So that is the distance that the person has climbed up on the ladder. All right, so we have the uh, perpendicular force of the person, which is mg cosine of 70 degrees times 7 meters, which is the lever, lever arm. And both of those are causing a torque in the counterclockwise direction. And then the only thing that's counteracting it is this purple force over here. Um, the purple force has a perpendicular component as well. So what you're going to do is we're adding these two torques and then we are subtracting the torque from the wall and that's going to be the force of the wall which we don't know what that is quite yet and then we're going to use actually the sine of 70 degrees times 12 meters okay so this one is going to be a little different based on where the arrow is located if we're getting the perpendicular component here and our angle of 70 degrees is right here you can see that this red vector is going to be on the opposite end of it as opposed to the adjacent end of the um, angle. So we're going to want to make sure that we use the sine of 70 degrees and then it's the full length of the ladder away from the pivot point from this green point over here, which is 12 meters from our original problem. So we have force of the wall, which is basically the normal force of the wall supporting the ladder um, times sine of 70 degrees times 12. Okay, that all equals zero because our whole entire system is at rest. So if we do some condensing, we have uh, 67.04 newtons from the ladder acting at a distance of six meters away. We have 201.11 newtons from the person, the 60 kilogram person acting seven meters away. And then we have that entire thing being counteracted by the force of the wall times 11.28. That 11.28 is the sine of 70 degrees times 12 meters. And that all equals zero Newton meters, our net torque. So um, what we can do is we can go ahead and set these um, things equal to each other. We could do that by taking this uh, force of the wall times 11.28 and adding it to the other side. So then we have the force of the wall times 11.28. And then if we multiply these two, these two, and then sum them up, um, they'll be left on the right side and that sum will be 1,810.01 Newton meters. And then we can go ahead and finish off by dividing both sides by 11.28. Okay, then our force of the wall comes out to 160.46 newtons. Okay, so we are basically done. We did 99% of the work. And since we have this expression up here originally, where we said the force of the wall minus the force of static friction equals zero, then we know that the force of the wall equals the force of static friction. So that means that this is our answer because that force is an equal amount in the opposite direction as our force of static friction. So our force of static friction is also 160.46 newtons. So I hope that was helpful in helping you set up and solve 
a force of static friction for a ladder in equilibrium. Thank you for watching and listening.